Hey everybody, this is Jeannie Alice Bruce. I work in the marketing department at North Mississippi Medical Center. And we are here today to talk about elective surgeries. If I'm a little hard to understand, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm wearing a mask as per all the appropriate guidelines to make sure um, we are safe. But we just thought it was important to talk to you about elective surgeries and talk about why it's important and talk about what we are doing to keep our patients and staff safe. So I wanna introduce Dr. Hire and Dr. Barry. They are here to talk to us. Y'all come over here um, right in front of the sign if you don't mind. So just start, um, Dr. Hire, introduce yourself real quick. Tell us about you. Thank you, Jeannie Alice. Glad to be here with everybody today. First of all, glad to be out doing the surgical procedures again. Uh, make sure that you can hear me. Yes. If you can't hear me, let me know. Okay. Um, and I understand the social distancing importance. My name is Rich Hire. I'm a uh, staff anesthesiologist. I work both here in the medical center and the women's health center. And we're here today to be, visit with you and show you our uh, policies and procedures that we're doing with in, during this COVID-19 issue. Okay. Dr. Barry, tell us about you and who you are. Uh, yes. My, my name is uh, Mont Barry. I'm a ear, nose, and throat doctor. I've been here approximately 22 years. And uh, I also uh, am, am most uh, interested in talking to you guys today because I think what the community and what our patients need to hear is that we have their interest at hand first and foremost. Mm -hmm. that safety of the patient is always been a priority and it doesn't change when we have this COVID-19 epidemic. And so as we resume elective surgery, we want to make sure they realize that we are going to put their priority first and we're going to make sure they are safe. We're going to make sure that our people who work uh, here are safe. And uh, as long as we continue to put safety first, we'll be able to safely and slowly resume our normal uh, surgical activity. Great. Okay, so the first thing I want to ask, just to make sure um, everybody's on the same page, is, you know, in the last few weeks to prevent the spread of COVID-19, we have been doing only emergent and urgent surgeries, and now we are starting to do elective surgery. So can you just give us um, a quick definition of what the difference is between urgent and emergent versus elective surgeries? Yeah, uh, certainly urgent uh, surgery is a life-threatening surgery, and we have continued to, and I'm ear, nose, and throat, so we have continued to do uh, airway cases uh, like tracheostomies, we've had to do trauma, and we've had children with dog bites, things that we normally do, we've had to do, terrible nose things. Uh, for me, uh, certainly the cardiac doctors, the orthopedic doctors, uh, many of this have done uh, emergent and urgent surgeries. Okay. Uh, they're also a, a category of, of things that need to be done in a timely fashion, but are not necessarily things that couldn't be put off a while until the pandemic had passed. Some of those are tonsils, some ear infections for us, things that, that if you if left untreated long-term, you could have some long-term problems. Certainly all the cancer cases uh, would also fall into that urgent, the emerging category. And so uh, those cases have, have had to be done and we've been very successful in not spreading any of the disease while we've been doing these urgent emergent and then we're going to start easing into the, the more not uh, emergent market, but uh, a little more uh, elective surgeries. Gotcha. Um, so, Dr. Hire, can you just tell us real quick? I know we're do we're starting to do elective surgeries here at the surgery center. Are we doing them at the main unit also? And what's the difference there? Well, I, I think that there's first of all, patient safety is 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 our number one goal. Mm -hmm. Whether it's done here, whether it's done at the Women's Center, whether mm -hmm. it's done at the main hospital. The, the procedures that are done here are outpatient specific, mm -hmm. and which are a little bit on the different side than what we do at the main hospital. But the elective procedures that you ask will be, obviously will be, need to be done at the main unit as well. Mm -hmm. And we're all, we're at both facilities breaking into this on a slow basis because mm -hmm. we want to make sure the safety of the patient safety of our visitors, uh, and as importantly, the safety of our, uh, our staff and personnel. Gotcha. So we've had a lot of people join us just in the last few minutes. So I want to just real quickly um, remind everybody that we've got Dr. Rich Hire and Dr. Montberry. We're at the Surgery Center and we're talking about how we have um, to continue to serve our community and to fulfill our mission, which is to continuously improve the health of the people of our region. We're doing elective surgeries again. So we're just going to um, show you our process. We're going to walk through the lobby and walk through this door and show you what we're doing. So 
let's get started. Dr. Hire and Dr. Berry, y'all go in front of me. Let's make sure that the audience knows that this is how when you enter one of our facilities, uh, no matter whether you're a staff person or whether you're a visitor or whether you're the patient, everybody will be admitted the same way. We have lab screening first, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we'll ask the questions if you have any symptoms or uh, of, of the COVID virus that we need to know about and aware of. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to see is exactly what our patients and our visitors uh, and staff uh, go through each day. Okay, great. Let's do it. Dr. Berry, go ahead. So we're walking through the door and Dr. Berry is going to stop and get his temperature checked. And he has no fever, so he's good to go in, Dr. Hyre. Yep. Okay. Great. Okay, she's already checked my temperature when I got here and I'm good to go and I've already got my mask on. So we're coming into the lobby, and so tell us what's different in here than normal. Well, obviously you can look and see uh, that the chairs are socially spaced and socially distanced. Normally we would have you know these in close proximity, but uh, they have spaced them out so that you could possibly sit with the family unit, but, but separately from anybody else who may need separation. So that's, okay. that's the new recommendation. And that's been the approach for a lot of us from the offices to here is uh, whether you wait here, whether you wait in your car, mm -hmm. because of the ability to communicate with each other, we can we can separate and still operate in a timely fashion getting people from a waiting place back into where we need to be. Okay. And so has it, has it changed as far as how many people are allowed to be with each patient in the waiting room? That's correct, yeah. We, they just allow one patient. Just one. Okay. Dr. Hire, I see some tape on the floor. What's the deal with that? What does that do? Well, if you've, uh, if you've been to uh, our local grocery stores, you mm -hmm. probably recognize what this is. But we actually did this prior to our grocery stores and places mm -hmm. doing that. It's, it's to allow for um, social distancing. Okay. That the ter terminology people are learning. And uh, so that each patient, as they enter into the surgical arena, we go one at a time, and we have a line by which they have to uh, pull them behind. Okay. And the social distancing, as is, is Dr. Berry uh, uh, described, uh, obviously the waiting area looks much different than it used to. Right. Uh, and uh, there's probably as widespread uh, separation here as, as I've seen in any, in any facility that I've attended. Okay. And I'm proud of that for us. Right. right. Okay. So after we are in the lobby and we are appropriately socially distanced, where do we go next? What happens next? Dr. Dr. Berry, Dr. Yeah, you want to lead the way? Are we going to Jerry to the, you want to go to the operating room? Sure. Is that where we want to go? Yeah, that just, well, Dr. Berry will be here and the next group of patients will be here. Right. So we're, we make sure we're six feet apart. Let me show everybody TJ. This is TJ Adams. Hey TJ, guys. introduce yourself. I'm TJ Adams. I'm the Vice President for Cardiovascular and Surgical Services and also have responsibility for the Ambulatory Surgery Center and Digestive Health. Uh, so I'll, I'll walk with the guys and we'll Great. talk through our process of doing this time. Great. Thank you so much. I'll get the okay. Thank you. I think we'll make sure we introduce our staff. Connie? Yeah, sure. Would I'm going to turn this way here? since the board is that way. There we go. Hey. Hey, I'm Connie. Um, hey, Connie. I'm charge nurse. You're pretty out there. Okay, great. Thank you. And Connie would be the, the nurse uh, uh, that would knock on the door and ask for the patient to come back. And she would assist them from seeing them and would escort that patient to, to its individual room. Okay, great. That's another good thing about this facility versus a lot of uh, holding areas is you have very individual rooms that you you don't just have a curtain or whatever between mm. you've got you've got nice it's very separate that people are very separate okay separate. great all right which way are we going now okay. i'm gonna we got a board back there so i'm making sure i don't show patient yeah. information yeah okay yeah. okay good point very good let's show them on the rooms yeah okay. Dr. Berry uh, yeah. eloquently described, and, that, and I think sure. that's a, a, a very, very important factor that each visitor and patient has a separate room. Mm -hmm. right. 
they should see you got all your monitoring stuff. TV, if you have a little bit of a weight, and you've got your privacy here. Mm -hmm. Again, we're just going to have one waiter, one person waiting at this time. Right. And uh, basically, uh, you'll wait here until your time of surgery. You'll have your surgery. You'll have mm -hmm. a recovery experience in the recovery room, and then you'll come back to this. Okay. So uh, your family will just be waiting there to talk with the doctors and, and anesthesia. So y'all talk to me a little bit about um, the differences in what you're doing in, and step this way a little bit so I don't get that board in the background okay. if y'all don't mind, yeah. sorry. Okay. Um, so just talk about what you're doing in the surgery suites that's different than normal. We've got a patient coming through, let's step this way. Okay? okay? So y'all, Dr. Hire, you start. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, each patient, first of all, in each room, we have sterilization, um, both gloves, wipes, and hand sanitizer mm -hmm. in each room for every patient and for the physician and the staff to utilize prior to uh, uh, walking in. Mm -hmm. okay? um, uh, we, 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 we harp on that sterility mm -hmm. and everybody has a pop process and policy by which they follow to do so. When we go back to the operating room, the differences today is just like the differences are when you go to the <coughs> To the different places in, the, in town. Okay. We want to make sure we have adequate PPE. Okay. You hear those words, patient protective equipment. Mm -hmm. And this is part of patient protective equipment mm -hmm. is your boots, your gowns, your hats, your mask. Uh, I don't have right now, we have in certain rooms, we'll have the use of yeah, yeah, Dr. Like Beard. Sure, there we go. This is protective eyewear that we wear. In okay. The right. So within, within the operating room and those patients, we have protective eyewear and we also have different masks. If it's a, a patient that was a higher risk of the COVID-19, then we utilize that on a normal basis that we have today. Okay. Um, TJ, is there got a low here we go sorry everybody we dropped off for a minute with a low connection but we're back uh talk about um the sanit sanitizing the extra sanitizing that you're doing in the or suites with the bioquil so, so the extra steps that we've taken from the front door to the back door mm -hmm. have been uh additional people um okay. environmental services and our staff wiping down constantly high, high traffic areas and, and areas of, of where the patient flow and our employees are going um, we also utilize a couple of technologies that uh, some people have heard of and some have not. One is a bioquil technology. Mm -hmm. I, I believe we're the only one in the state uh, as far as a system that does have bioquil technology. And we're also utilizing UV technology as mm -hmm. well. So we, we constant, it, every day we terminally clean our rooms. We also terminally clean in between every surgical procedure. In addition to that, we're also bioquilling and are using UV technology. Okay. So. Uh, from a safety standpoint, we've taken those additional steps. We, we have utilized BioQuill and UV technology for a number of years, but uh, our rotation now has increased uh, during this pandemic. And what does the, what is BioQuill? BioQuill is a uh, hydrogen peroxide. It, it, it's a unit that based into a, an operating room and mm -hmm. it takes about an hour to an hour and a half to sterilize or disinfect that, that, that room. Gotcha. UV is, is basically, it, it is UV light, mm -hmm. and, it, and its turnaround time is less, um, but the surface area, it, it, it depends on the size of the units. But, okay. So we, we're, we're offering both of those. Gotcha. Okay. Let me mention one other safety yes. measure that we're taking. Uh, so uh, people have talked about at-risk procedures when mm -hmm. they're talking about specific <clears throat> procedures that the patient's having. Okay. And those are potential aerosolization. So as they mm. saw when this virus in certain places kind of got out of hand, it was through aerosolization. Mm -hmm. So the viral load, as they feel like, tends to be in the nasal pharynx and the nose area and the oral cavity. And of course, we as ENTs, the dentists, the GI doctors, the pulmonary doctors, they all have to enter that oral cavity to do a lot of things that we're doing. So what we're doing prior to any uh, procedure that we're doing now collectively we are testing our patients mm. that that allows the patient not to be at risk uh, and it also allows the staff not to be at risk so if these patients have to have a negative test before we're willing to do their elective procedure and so it's everybody also additionally all the staff and all of the uh, uh, 
all the staff, all of the surgeons, all the CRNAs are all also being tested so that okay. we know, and, and we've already begun that as early as last Friday, and, and we've been very blessed that we have had so, such a small number of people who have tested, like of the, of the first almost 300 people, there, mm -hmm. were, there were less than three or four people who actually have positive antibody, which means that the virus has not been terribly present in this area. Okay. Which is which has really been a blessing as well, and we've seen that that we just have not had a, a large experience with uh, the virus as far as the exposure, which is a good, a very good thing. Great. Add, additional added safety. Right. Okay. We're, We're gonna walk this way. I'm I'm walking backwards. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Um, okay, where are we going now? So we're, so we're just... Uh, go back to the lobby? Yes, we're yep, go let's back do that. To the lobby and finish up. Yep. I, I think because of privacy issues... I think that's a good idea. Yeah, good. Okay. So, um, why it's important to not put off elective surgeries now. Why, why it's safe um, and why, why now is the time that we need to start offering this again. Um, Dr. Barry, I'll start with you. Yeah, sure. uh, well, the first thing that people need to know is that when they when this virus first came out, people were told to stay home, stay away right. from the ER, stay away from the hospital, stay away from all the clinics, and, and we tried to shrink. to and Some connection issues. Let's yeah. move out a little bit more, yeah, sure. if that's okay. Sure. Just right there by that door, I think, was giving me a little bit of a block. Okay, we're back live. There we go. Okay, okay Dr. Barry, continue talking about the importance so, of why so this is a good time. Uh, I do feel like that first people need to know that it's safe, that we are making every precaution to the issues that you have. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like that, that if there are things that people have, because what they've seen nationwide is, you know, that people aren't doing heart cats, people aren't doing screening colonoscopies, people aren't aren't going to the doctor, and, and they know that all the other illnesses that left untreated that could eventually take your life, right. we know those haven't gone away. And so because of that, people need to understand that if you have health issues, you do need to get those addressed. And right. Everybody has understandably been, been frightened of getting out and about because I think they've done the right thing. But now I feel like as we safely and uh, slowly resume normal health care activities, that people should feel safe that, that we're doing everything we can to address whatever issues that they have. Okay. That makes sense. Dr. Hire, do you have anything to add? Dr. Barry covers it very well. Being the surgeon that he is, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just the anesthesiologist. Right. But I think, as, as we all know, uh, when you're when, when we've been isolated over the last six, seven weeks, uh, there are health issues that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And uh, those patients, and our patients, and our communities that are, are at home are wanting to know where we are and what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm as comfortable with our process as I've ever been. And I'm so proud of our staff, our medical center, our leadership, and the direction that they uh, uh, have taken us in this. I, and I'll, be, I'll just be frank, is that I'm, I'm safer walking in here than I am Lowe's or Kroger or Sure, yeah. sure. And, and I, I, I don't mean that negative because, right. but I just want to make sure that people understand that mm -hmm. and that they need to have those Sur those surgical procedures done and that we're okay with the way we're handling it at this point. Right. Yeah. And uh, got great direction from our uh, medical staff and uh, uh, our leadership and uh, so glad that we can reinstitute under a little bit changed environment, mm -hmm. right? but I think an improved environment. Right. right, right. And I think we'll continue to assess as, as the state and the federal levels have both said, we are gonna, we're gonna do, and then we're gonna assess. Right. And we're gonna do, and we're gonna assess. And as long as we're safely moving forward, right. We're gonna continue to move forward. We've had a couple of people pop in in the comments and say that um, either they're here now or have been here recently, and that they felt like everything was immaculate and everybody was doing everything they could to keep them safe. So that's really nice to hear from yeah. Yeah. our community. Um, thank you for that. Um, okay, that's all my questions. Um, do y'all have anything to add? I'd like to add just Please. On the end part, I'd like to say thanks so much to all the staff right. that yes. we have here. There have been people that have had layoff, furlough, different entities right. involved. We want you back. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we want to be back with with full uh, staffing that right. we've had in the past. 
because those people are so important to us right. here. That's right. Exactly. And uh, we're we're without having mm -hmm. that is uh, is uh, is we're, we're we're feeling for you guys out there. Right. Thank we'll you. Get you back just as soon as we can. Yes, thank you, Doctor Hire. Yeah. TJ, you got anything you want to add? Uh, from, from, from my standpoint, we're providing uh, very safe care for our patients and, and our staff daily. And we're going to continue to, to hear additional comments and things that we can do better. Right. Uh, our job is continue to do better and to take the best care we can for the, for the people in our region. So just thank you guys so much. Uh, our support from a medical staff side, employees, and our patients has been phenomenal. And, and just thank the community. Thank okay. You thank you so much. Thank y'all. Uh, Dr. Hire and Dr. Barry, thank y'all for joining us. Thank you to TJ and to all the staff at the Surgery Center. Um, everybody, I want to let you know this video uh, is going to be available on our Facebook page once we are not live anymore. So please share it. Please let your friends and family know that it's out here and um, that it's available to let you know what we're doing to keep everybody safe. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time.